Morning. Now in the Harvey Norman Lounge, our resident vet Alex Melrose joins us along with dog trainer and vet nurse Kelly McFarland to talk to us about the nitty gritty of de-sexing our pets. Welcome guys. Thank you. Thanks. Alex, welcome back. First time you've been on the show this year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, nice to have you back. Just finished holidays. Oh, <laughs> as all vets do. Now tell us about de-sexing. When should I look at de-sexing my animals? Well, ideally around six months of age. Okay, is there, is there a particular reason why six months? Any earlier is not recommended? Well, it's, it's sort of a good blend between a safe enough age for anaesthesia and not leaving it too late so that they're already pregnant before you, you try to get it Which could be a real problem. Um, yeah. Kelly, how major is the operation? We class it as a routine operation, but people do forget, especially with um, yeah, the bitches, so the female dogs, it is still quite intensive, but as I say, it's routine, it's something we do every day. Mm, okay, so yeah. and, and, and is there anything I should do to get my animal prepared for it? Don't get too attached to no. those guys. Yeah. They're going somewhere yeah. very soon. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. You, apart from not feeding them the night before, so, you know, we need them in on an empty tummy, um, definitely, again, for the females, they can't be in season. Uh, that makes the surgery more difficult, so we have to postpone. But other than that, yeah, you got pretty often, much it, really. Yeah, yeah, often you've got to have a good hard chat to the husbands. Yeah. You know, Especially when it's the male dog or cat. get a bit stressed. <laughs> they like, have a problem with they it, they do, they? start projecting what's going to happen. I bet they do. Yeah. I bet they do and go yeah. like this. Mm. Um, should I look at keeping my animal away from others before they get de-sexed? Yeah. I mean, yeah, how do you know if they're going to get pregnant or not? Well, yeah, I mean, that's a really good question. Um, I mean, especially with cats, I mean, they can, in theory, they could get pregnant from four or five months of age. Mm. So if you're waiting till six months, there's a little bit of a window there where if they're just running free in the neighbourhood, um, it could happen. So the other reason to keep cats inside a bit more when they're that young is that they just get beaten up too badly by adult adult cats. So, They're very territorial, aren't they? Yeah. So, yeah, you've got to be sensible and you've got to kind of plan it. And this mm -hmm. is all part of choosing to own a pet. So how long will they be at the vets for the operation? Just the day. Yeah. Yeah, just the day, just the day usually. Yeah. So they don't stay overnight? You just drop them off Not in the usually. morning? Pick We've them up? Really yeah. good, you know, fluid support, painkillers, um, really good anaesthetics these days that they can recover from pretty quickly. So those, the old, in the older days, sure, that used to happen a lot, but... So long ago. Yeah, way before. <laughs> way I before. Time. Ancient way times before. when you were just butter But babe. I've heard about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't know anything about the old days. No, no, no not no. us. We're so modern. Um, is there any sort of form of aftercare, Kelly, that's required once you've got your little baby home? Oh, usually strict rest. If it's uh, cats, keep them indoors. Uh, anything from up to seven to ten days until the stitches are out. If it's dogs, lead walk only, so don't let them go charging off. Mm. We do not want them to burst their stitches and come back into us. So, do, do they yeah. tend to nibble at their stitches? They can do. They can lick their wounds, um, or the wound it sometimes can get a bit itchy when it's healing. Mm. And so we sometimes send them home with a lovely cone bucket on oh, their okay. head. What is yeah, it, the bucket of the cone, cone of shame? shame, of shame. That they get. Yes, yeah. um, what about other health advantages, Alex, from de-sexing your pets? Well, there's quite a few. I mean, one of the ones that I often talk about is sometimes people that have got dogs that are quite calm, and um, not aggressive to other dogs, they think, well, you know, what's the benefit of getting my dog neutered mm -hmm. if he's behaving himself perfectly? What you'll find is that other dogs will attack entire dogs much more. So those dogs often come in with bite wounds from playing in the park, and you just stitch them up, and then people think, oh, I'm just going to have to do it anyway. So that's just one of the benefits. There's heaps of other things. Kelly? Yeah, so if, yeah um, for male dogs, I mean, again, you can look at things like certain preventing certain types of cancer, um, especially, you know, joys of the testicular mm. type yeah. cancers. Um, females, the, our biggest issue, which we do um, see, is what we call pyometras. So they get um, pus actually in the womb, and it's really life threatening. Um, mm. So we tend to see that usually uh, out of hours. It tends to be that. And that is a horrible thing. Yeah, horrible. horrible. In the middle so, of the night, and and they, you know, they can die. Um, even yeah. on the, the okay. theatre table, it's that serious. What so, sort yeah. of price range are we looking at for your average de-sexing? Well, it could be it could be anything from probably is, yeah. I don't know eight, what eighty ninety dollars for a, a, a cat neuter. You know, it goes up with size and, yeah. and how right up to a few is, hundred for for a large bitch bay. Ah, uh, but there are programs, aren't there? Um, charities have introduced that for those who can't afford to have their pets de-sexed. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about this. <laughs> We've been arguing about this. this oh, is why he's you? looking at me, yeah, he's like, yeah. I really yeah. want to say this. And I was like, you can't say that. Oh, so, this yeah. sounds intriguing. <laughs> well, I guess in general, what, what, what's, what's really nice, which is happening at the moment, is that a lot of um, rescue charities are working in conjunction with local vets mm -hmm. and um, feeding the owners of, of um, pets that can't afford to get this done themselves into their local vet clinics to get surgeries done either really, really cheaply or 
for free right. to try and help with the overpopulation that we've got. You know, exactly, and animals being dumped and all the rest yeah. of it. Yeah, mm. and we've got like, you know, thousands of cats and dogs getting dumped every year. Yeah. In Auckland alone. And that's not on. That right. is not on at all. Okay, well, thank you for that. Nice, nice answer of a question there, Alex. You did very well. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, you too, Alex and Kelly. Always a great double act. And if you've got furry pets, pick up a Sticky King washable hair, pet fur and lint remover and get the cafe special deal by calling the number on screen.